Artificial intelligence, the threat to the human mind. In its simplest form, it is a man-made machine that exhibits human-like intellect. But what is it really? Artificial intelligence, or AI, is the attempt to simulate human intelligence. Some believe it is a harmless tool to make life easier, but others believe it could be the end of humanity. Though a world infused with AI can seem threatening, it has already improved our lives through medicine, education, and transportation. And if implemented successfully, artificial intelligence will continue to forge our future. Though AI has taken off within the past century, the idea of human-like systems has been around for a long time. However, it was not until the 1940s that Alan Turing created what many claimed was the first computer, which was designed to break Nazi codes in World War II. Turing also looked into the future of machine intelligence, picturing a day where machines could perfectly imitate human thought. Preparing for those times, he came up with the Turing test, an evaluation that would measure the intelligence of a computer when compared to a human. The idea was this. When given the task to differentiate between a machine and a human through a series of questions, if a human interrogator could not observe a difference, the machine would pass the test. Turing's ideas, though intelligible, seemed absurd for his time. The day where a human is fooled by a machine was neither expected nor achievable. However, in August of 1955, that was all about to change. There was an idea in the mess of his desk. Scratching his head, John McCarthy was on the brink of a revelation. Could we create a machine that could think like a human? Then it began, the quest for artificial intelligence. In 1955, McCarthy contacted numerous professionals, rounding up some of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Together, John McCarthy, Marvin Minsky, Nathaniel Rochester, and Claude Shannon would spend two years bringing to life the most influential idea of the century. In the summer of 1956, at the Dartmouth Conference, these mathematicians would brainstorm the founding footsteps into the field of AI. In the midst of the conference, McCarthy created Lisp, the first coding language to use expressions rather than statements. However, while the conference had started chatter in the scientific community, it was not the breakthrough McCarthy envisioned it to be. The scientists promoted their own personal research interests, while McCarthy had intended the conference to broaden research on human-like machines. Among the scientists at the Dartmouth conference were Al Newell and Herbert Simon, with their novel invention, The Logic Theorist. It was developed as the first thinking machine in 1956 and was capable of solving geometric proofs. Despite this important step towards artificial intelligence, the logic theorist still wasn't a problem-solving machine. Newell and Simon continued to work together to create the general problem solver in 1959. They studied how humans solved problems and found that they tend to define a goal, identify obstacles, and then determine the best way to circumvent these obstacles. This process, called means-end analysis, allowed the general problem solver to become one of the first practical AI programs in existence. As AI continued to gain popularity, it began to attract investors for research. Organizations such as Minsky and McCarthy's Project Mac, or the Stanford AI Laboratory, were fully funded by the U.S. military's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, aka DARPA. Meanwhile, scientists were making advances towards McCarthy's original dream. Using Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitt's ideas from their 1943 paper on how to mathematically replicate the neurons in the human brain, Frank Rosenblatt created the basis of neural networks by artificially modeling a neuron in 1957. This artificial neuron, called a perceptron, was used by machines to mimic the way humans learn. The perceptron will be given example images and asked to define the image in one of two categories. Depending on if it was correct or not, it would adjust itself and become more accurate. Eventually, it would be able to easily and accurately differentiate data sets, mirroring how humans make decisions. Though this was a great achievement, there was doubt about the next step towards truly mimicking human intelligence. In his 1959 paper, Programs with Common Sense, McCarthy argued that common sense was the key to progress on AI. He proposed that the lack of sufficient improvement in AI was due to the fact that machines are not given the same universal knowledge or instinct that humans are born with, and they therefore cannot make the same educated decisions that a human mind would. It was at this time that progress in AI started to plateau. The final blow to AI's hope at the time was dealt by Marvin Minsky in 1969. 
Minsky, who participated in the original conference on AI in 1956, published his book, Perceptrons, An Introduction to Computational Geometry, in which he criticized Rosenblatt and the perceptron, warning of its limitations in solving more complex data sets, saying, how can an intelligent young man like you waste your time with something like this? After Minsky's book, the scientific community lost hope in AI and funding started to disappear. Research on artificial intelligence entered into what is referred to as the AI winter. Research was limited by the poor computational power available at that time. Not only this, but McCarthy's concerns about the lack of common sense were brought to life. Scientists were stuck on how to replicate human instinct and were starting to realize that tasks that are second nature to humans are extremely more complex when trying to be programmed. However, the winter saw a slight turn for the better with the creation of expert systems in the 1980s. Instead of trying to replicate general human intelligence, expert systems focused on a simple situation in which the AI would know all the preconceived knowledge that it needed to know for the particular situation. In this way, the machine was able to reason like a human using common sense. In the mid-1980s, neural networks began to rise with the idea of backpropagation, a way for systems to self-correct predictions. This addressed Minsky's concerns about its practicality. Because of this, AI saw a surge in commercial use, and expert systems were bought by companies to assist in processing customer orders for computers. Later, in 1989, Jan LeCun used neural networks to create deep learning, a more complex, accurate way of classifying data. On May 11th, 1997, Garry Kasparov was sweating. Hundreds of thousands of eyes were on him. Kasparov was the face of a battle unlike any battle seen before, the battle of man versus machine. In the 90s, Garry Kasparov was the youngest chess champion in the world, at only 22, he took the chess world by storm and had already beat previous world champion Bobby Fischer. His match with the IBM computer was expected to be no different. It was a tournament of six games. At this moment, he had won the first, lost the second, and the next three had been draws. Everything was relying on this game. Admittedly rattled by Deep Blue's performance, Kasparov lost the game and the match to Deep Blue. When Kasparov lost to Deep Blue, both the AI community and the general public were left to grapple with an important question. What really was the battle of man versus machine? As we get closer to truly replicating the human brain, we still do not fully know what the consequences will be. It is estimated that over the next 10 years, some 375 million jobs will be taken by artificial intelligence. Many are concerned that dangerous human influences have corrupted objective systems. But these are the concerns of today. In 1997, Kasparov's famous match showed the world that there was hope in the future of intelligent machines. Although some people saw Deep Blue's victory as a threat, Kasparov himself came to see a different perspective. He argues that machines and AI are already a major part of our world, and our reliance on them will only grow. Instead of resisting machine intelligence, we need to embrace it and drive it forward. Since then, research on AI has skyrocketed. Funding from DARPA, Microsoft, Google, and other major companies has allowed AI to make progress in leaps and bounds, becoming an integral part of human life, whether it's protecting a company's financial information or your Alexa reminding you to take your chicken out of the freezer. Today, improvements in natural language processing, vision intelligence, and robotics allow robots to learn in the same way that a human child would, using senses such as hearing, sight, and touch. Machines can now instantly translate languages, give personalized recommendations on social media apps, and even conduct screenings for skin cancer. New intelligent bots, such as ChatGPT and Bing, are proof that we are still forging the frontier of artificial intelligence today. I don't see that uh, human intelligence is something that humans can never understand. John McCarthy's vision of an intelligent machine is more achievable than ever before. By examining how the human mind processes information and makes decisions, machines now have the tools to simulate or even surpass human intelligence. This hearing is on the oversight of our artificial intelligence intended to write the rules of AI. We're a little bit scared of this. I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. So how could so you be confident they're not sentient if you don't know what sentient means? Technology can be both a threat and an opportunity.